Hello and welcome, my name is Ajax Post and we're back here taking another look at Transport Inc. And why, you might be asking, would we be doing that? Well, it all started back at the beginning of this month, back when I did my channel update video. Um, a comment was posted on that, which very simply said, Hello, what's happening with Transport Inc? And I thought, actually, that is quite a good question. We first saw the game just as the Kickstarter project was coming to a close, and that was back in November 2019. And interesting looking game. It looked like fun, but was clearly far from finished, and there wasn't much I could do with it beyond offer that first look at the sort of basic mechanics of the game as they had it prepared for public viewing, at least, at that point. So... It's been a while since I was on their Discord channel. It's been a while since I last looked at the Steam page. So let's check where we are now. There haven't been many updates. There have been, there's been a fair amount of tinkering behind the scenes of the game. And they have added one or two nice new features to it, which are very handy to see. But let's see if we get this thing started properly. We still have pretty much the same map to work on. We've got three, four, five places we can start our company. But the one little thing I've got here as an issue is I'm not sure which country is best. There's no indication at this point of difficulty level, which if any country gives you more money or funds to start with or is more expensive to start in and so on. So you kind of pick them blind at that point. And also on that front screen, although I don't show it, uh, there's still no save and load options. In fact, there are no options at all. So the chances of me running a long-running Let's Play on this are, at the moment, nil, unfortunately. But there you are. Um, we're going through the tutorial again here, as you can see. Uh, you can actually skip the tutorial once you've completed it. So you can go back to the game once you've gone through all the tutorial steps and play it completely at your own speed and pace and just doing things exactly how you want them to. One thing they've improved here is the amount of information on each of these cities. So it gives you more information on what the city demands in terms of uh, ordinary passengers, first, pla first class passengers, what sort of other industries and other facilities are available in the cities universities, shopping centres, industries, sports arenas and stuff. All that sort of stuff is there. Uh, so you can sort of get an idea of where demand for passengers will be focused here. So the first thing you do normally is just set up your depot and then create a few routes to set that up. And as you can see here, it's all fairly straightforward. The UI is a little bit unintuitive in that you're moving between the bottom menu to select uh, what you want to do and the top left the top left menu which sets up sort of various sub options within that so you create the depot uh, by going into the bottom menu and then you go to the top menu to actually buy the vehicles so it's a little bit awkward uh, likewise you create the route by clicking on a city to start with then click the route button and then you go into the shop to buy a vehicle to put on the route. One little thing they've, they've put on since uh, we last saw the game was you can now do proper looping routes. So you can actually send your bus, as I'm doing here, uh, around two or three, four towns, whatever, and then circle it back, click on e clicking on each one in turn, and then right-clicking at the very end to say, right, this is that was the last leg, go straight back to where you started from, from there. So the routing is a lot better now than it was. Uh, there is still no option to build your own roads or rails or anything like that, to be honest. So you're still using the country's own infrastructure uh, within uh, to, to lay your routes on. So your buses and trains, whatever, will use only the roads and rails that are there already built in. And there you are, you get your vehicles, you decide which one you want to get. And it's probably best to start with a cheap vehicle to start with. Um, and there you can get the you can see the icons of how many passengers they carry, whether they carry first and second class passengers or just second class as it were, ordinary passengers. Uh, you get how fast they go, you get how much fuel they need, so how often they need to refuel, and how long they last between maintenance cycles. And as you can see there, we can choose different types of vehicle if we have the funds to do so. We can buy a license to run aeroplanes and trains. We just need to pay the extra to do that. At this point, I've not managed to make enough money to do that, but 
I'm told by other people on the forums that you can certainly achieve that. When you look at a vehicle's uh, detailed information, you get all sorts of useful information. You can upgrade it, for example, to add better seats so you get uh, more comfortable customers. And you can see in here what the customers like about your vehicle as well. So whether they like the price or the comfort or they want more of speed and comfort or whatever they require from you. So you can sort of get a, a very nice idea on each route what your customers particular demands are by looking at the vehicle. Again, it's not an entirely intuitive process going into the vehicle to find that out. You would think perhaps that would be on a route screen, but there you go. As we saw in the uh, first video, you can set your ticket prices. So if you're getting competitive, you can set uh, both the standard class and the first class prices. And also, as you see there, we'll see this uh, more clearly in a moment, the cargo price. Yes, they have introduced cargo now into the game, so you will be transporting freight between cities, if you have the vehicles to do, to do that, of course. There is no differentiation at this point between different types of cargo. Cargo is cargo. But obviously, if you're connecting industrial-type cities, then uh, that's going to be more of a demand. So you can exploit that to earn money for your company. The route system, uh, that hasn't changed a great deal in that you can adjust your route as you need to. So if it is too long, you can shorten it. If you want to add intermediary towns into the route, you can do that on the route page as well. There is a degree of randomness about the game in that uh, you won't get the same competition in your country every playthrough. The world map is pretty accurate, what they have of it, um, but the competition you get in the country is randomised. So in some games I've had about four or five competitors just <laughs> barreling me into the ground. Uh, in this run through I think uh, I didn't have any competition in Germany for quite some time, uh, but they eventually just started coming into the city and, and started eating into my profits. At this point I've not yet determined what type of routes are best, whether it's better to have short point-to-point -point routes and just link them up. So you have, say, a bus going from Nuremberg to Stuttgart and then another route going from Stuttgart to Frankfurt and then a third from Frankfurt to Dortmund, for example, um, and just ensure that you've got vehicles going between towns that have demand between them, or whether it's better to have longer routes uh, with more buses. Again, that's something that you will learn as you, you play through the game. Now, the game ha does have more events built into it. We have good events, like the sports uh, event going on here, which means that that city will require more demand. So more people will want to go to that city than previously. And it tells you where it is. It tells you what it is. It tells you what the demand uh, increases. Like, well, it tells you that there is going to be a demand increase for how long. So it's up to you to take advantage of that. And there are likewise bad events. We see a couple here which are the road and under construction which don't aren't terribly bad they simply mean your vehicles will go that bit slower if they traverse that length of road while that's in operation. One, one thing they, they have added to the game uh, in one of the recent updates is managers and they will take care of some of the awful micromanaging that might get overwhelming if you've got a lot of vehicles on the road. Because the one thing you've got to do without a manager is you've got to spot when your vehicles need maintaining, when they need repair, and send them to the depot yourselves. The managers, as it says here, will take care of that. So they'll take care of sending the vehicles to depots instead of having you having to do that. But they are quite expensive. So that's 30 grand for a uh, office and manager to take care of your vehicle maintenance. But to be honest, once you've got a good fleet of vehicles, you will be very grateful for that assistance. They've improved the statistics now. You get more information on how much money you're making in terms of the vehicle, in terms of the route, and overall. It's nowhere near good enough in my mind at the moment. So, for example, I got awfully confused on this screen, which is showing you the expenses and the income for the last month and overall. Uh, that's okay. I would like to be to see more time periods. I'd like to see um, perhaps last month or year to date and overall. Or I might like to go back several years just to see how 
uh, my, my um, budgets, my income, my expenses and so on have developed over time. But if you've got a good chart, that will do the job uh, just as well. But we haven't quite got that yet. What I failed to spot when I first saw this is this, this is not a proper balance sheet. It tells you all your expenses for the last month and overall and all your income for the last month and overall but it doesn't take one number from the other so you don't get a bottom line figure you don't see profit or loss at the bottom so for quite some time when i was playing this earlier i was seeing that last figure the total uh, the very bottom of that screen 35 grand nearly 36 grand that's a good profit except it's not a profit it's the money i'm earning that's the income i am in fact losing a good deal less a good deal more than that i am actually spending 121000 in the last month so my losses are quite substantial so it's good to have that there but it's not quite good enough just yet the charts on here i'm not entirely sure about um, they're giving you the net worth and all the vehicles that you've got but what um, it's nice to know how many vehicles you've got. That's good. You can compare that against your competition and your net worth is useful. But wouldn't it be much nicer if we had actual profit and loss graphs in here as well or passenger number graphs? Are you transporting more passengers or less passengers this month or last year or whenever? Um, so there's promise there, but it's not quite not quite there yet it's not quite as detailed as you would want in a real logistics management game like this as you can see if you look around the map here you can scroll around and you can see where your competition is now as i said in some playthroughs i've actually had most of the competition in my own home market of germany for example uh, but uh, wherever they are you can see them here as far as i can tell if you're in you can't get cross continents so if you're playing in europe you can't go across to uh, usa and one of the features I don't recall seeing in the previous version we had uh, when I first played the game was the loan system. So you are able to take out a loan if you are running into financial difficulties. And we just need that little bit of extra pep in the bank balance to get those new vehicles to set up that brand new route. OK, some of the uh, events that can happen to your vehicle or to, to your routes in general is here we see that my vehicle has crashed. I cannot take it back to be repaired. That's it. It is removed from the game altogether, so I need to buy a new one. Again, is there going to be a manager in the game which says, oh, hang on, we've got a crash vehicle. We'll send out a repair truck to pick it up and uh, and fix it. So at least it, we can get it on the road in some condition or other. And there was a game I played quite some time ago which was called... Uh, something like Freight Inc. or Freight Tycoon, something along those lines, where you did have a maintenance depot uh, where you could put in your tow trucks and they would hurtle off down the, down the main roads, down the motorway, and pick up any of your crashed vehicles, bring them back for repair and maintenance. Or, if you preferred, you could waste money on the sort of contracted recovery services like the AA or the RAC or Green Flag or whoever it is in your country that goes out and finds dead vehicles and picks them up and fixes them. And there are lots of these different types of events that come up. If they're flashed in red, then they are bad news. So you can get things like floods. You can get events like earthquakes. And it will tell you in the little pop-up box exactly what the impact is going to be that uh, some in some cases i think the flood you would get more demand for people to escaping that city they need to get out away from the flood but obviously there's going to be fewer people wanting to travel to the city so there's some really nice mechanics going on here in terms of dealing with real world type events just looking at the top control bar uh, here on the sort of top right hand side of the screen there are some improvements here um, there are some things which haven't been improved, unfortunately. One of those things, again, maybe I'm just being picky about this, but when I'm playing a game, I like to stop and think and then take action. I'm not a real fan or player of real-time strategy type games where you just have to keep on going and hope you can keep up with whatever the computer is doing and, oh my God, it's all too much for me and I'm running away and I've lost. I like to a civilization kind of thing or a transport fever kind of thing or a city skylines kind of thing 
where you lay down your plans, you enact those plans, and things happen. Even Stellaris, which I'm currently playing as well. You pause it, do your thinking, set the plans in motion, and off they go. And then you can speed it up as much as you'd like until the next big event uh, happens. And I like to do that by pressing a key or two on the keyboard. I have the tab key, like in Transport Fever, just tab and it increases the speed or pauses. Uh, or in some other games, they use the number keys, one, two, three. There's no such thing in Transport Inc. And that really annoys the heck out of me. Sorry guys, but we do need keyboard control for speed. Uh, however, they have improved on the sound effects. Uh, they now have sliders on them. So you can turn the sound effects and the music uh, to as loud or as quiet or non-existent as you like. You can't do it on the front menu, which is a little bit of a, again, a petty annoyance perhaps, but at least we do have some sound control now, which is very welcome. Another thought on these bus upgrades that you can make is there's no indication here that I could work out how much the upgrade would actually cost. You can see here how much it would improve whatever feature it was, the fuel consumption, the seating comfort, the durability or the speed. But how much is it going to cost to, inc to improve my vehicles? And is that cost different for different types of vehicles? You imagine it might be. Um, but it's nice to know up front how much money I'm spending to improve my vehicles or depots or anything else for that matter. If you're feeling like one country isn't enough, if you're making enough money and you've got all the routes covered in one country, you can still, of course, expand into adjoining or, in, I don't know, you could possibly expand into totally distant uh, territories as well, if you like. It's just a matter of having the amount of money to purchase the license in those countries. Different countries will cost different amounts, depending on how many cities there are, basically how many people there are to be transported around, or indeed, how much freight there is, perhaps. Now, the, one of the new things they've added to the game, uh, well, I certainly don't remember seeing it in the previous one, is bank loans, which are very handy if you need that extra fillip, that extra little bounce in your bank balance uh, to get that little, that one extra vehicle or two that will really turn that route around and make it profitable, profitable and beat your opponent. And uh, the loan system works quite nicely. You can select how much money you want. You can select how many days you're willing to pay it, pay for, how long you need to pay it back over. Um, so you can adjust it to suit your particular uh, sort of financial status. And again, this is where I, I went a little bit wrong in this particular play playthrough by not reading the profit figure properly. Uh, so I was actually taking out a loan I couldn't really afford. Uh, and then everything went wrong from there on in. But hey, that's my fault, not the game's fault necessarily. And you get a nice summary at the end of uh, how much you have to pay back each month. Now what we're looking for here is a new route, which I can use to transport cargo. We set the route up, and as usual, we just go into our shop, and this time we're looking for cargo vehicles. Again, there's a variety to choose from, uh, with various different weights, uh, capacities, speeds, and obviously costs. And one thing you'll notice here, which I'm, I don't honestly recall, I'm not sure if I tested this properly in the first version, is if you put a vehicle on a, uh, on a route line, which where there's actually two routes there so there is a passenger route already on that line as well as the cargo route it will prompt you um, if you're hovering over this stretch of road there are two routes or three routes that uh, are run along this road uh, choose which one you want to put this vehicle on which is fair enough oh one very nice feature that uh, that we see here is that if you try and send back too many vehicles for maintenance to be repaired at your depot it does now actually tell you there is no room in the office. <laughs> there is there are there is no room at the depot. You do need to expand it. The route screen has been nicely improved, I think, uh, in that we've now got more information about that route in terms of its profitability, how many vehicles there are on there at the moment, and so on. What would be nice would be if you could name the routes as well. Uh, to make them more identifiable. Uh, for example, when we were looking at putting that cargo vehicle down, uh, and we were given a choice of two or three routes that run along that stretch of road, um, if they ran to the same three towns, 
how would I know which one was the cargo route and which was the passenger route? So it'd be nice to be able to differentiate easily uh, when, when we're placing vehicles down as to what route they would be going on to. One bugbear here again is I like things, I like data that you can drill through. I like information panels which aren't just showing you data but taking you into data. So for example here I would like to be able to drill down into the route information from that panel itself. Okay, this is my list of routes. If I click on it, I can see the detailed information about the vehicles on that route, how much money is I'm making on that route, or how much I'm losing, the condition of my vehicles, if there's any special characteristics of that route or whatever. I'd like to be taken to the detailed route information screen just by double clicking or whatever on that panel itself and selecting my route. What you can do is you can click on the little sort of location pin icon and that will highlight and take you to the route so you can sort of get to it that way. But it's nowhere near as sweet and simple uh, and ergonomic as, as I would like to see. I think we actually saw this in the very first version of the game we had back in uh, November. Uh, you get a list of your bus drivers or the drivers of your vehicles. They appear to be all just one class, so they're not individually identified. But you can change their wages, if you will, their salaries. Uh, I'm not sure whether they're paid weekly, daily or monthly or on a zero hours. I'm not sure. But you, if you are running a little bit tight when it comes to uh, your profit margin, uh, you are able to adjust your personnel costs as well, which is nice. So I've got quite a, a busy map now. It's nowhere near as busy as it could be. Um, but it's, it's enough for me to at times struggle to control because at this point I haven't been able to afford a manager to manage the maintenance. I'm doing it all by hand. And one thing you can see here is so many vehicles now are running short in terms of reliability. They all need maintenance more frequently now because as we've seen they deteriorate over age. They come out of the depot ready to go back on the road but they're not in pristine condition anymore. Their reliability has gone down. Whether that actually ties into crashes and breakdowns and stuff like that I don't know. I'd like to think it does but I can't positively say whether that is the case or not. I mean, this is going to be one of the challenges of the game at this point, I think, is working out at what point you can afford to make, to automate some features like maintenance, where if you need, or if you still want to do it manually, how many depots you need, or if you upgrade existing depots so you can get more vehicles uh, in for repair at one time. It does become, that's the challenge, it is that logistical challenge of managing the fleet getting the income from the passengers and the freight that you're delivering uh, and trying to, to keep that above the, the escalating costs of maintenance for your vehicles. Right, so we're running to the end of month 12 here on this map and at the moment this alpha build of the game only allows you to work for a year so it is quite a challenge to see all the features that are available in the game you have to be quite good at it be quite efficient at getting those routes working and profitable which as you can see i'm not particularly <laughs> but so once a year is done the game will end and you've got to restart again afresh and unfortunately because there is no save or load uh, we can't continue this this route beyond that so I've, I've probably done a lot of carping, a lot of complaining, a, a fair amount of negativity into this review in, th in terms of things I don't like or I'm not entirely happy with. But at its heart, at its heart, I think this game offers a lot of potential. This sort of challenge of managing a large fleet against um, an aggressive set of competitors, facing the challenge of meeting obstacles from the natural world, disasters, criminal events. One of the things they've added into, into the game in one of the recent updates is dirty actions, as they call it, where you can actually sort of um, in, ensure that your your competitors' vehicles have accidents on their en route to uh, particular sporting events or something like that, for example. So you can engage in industrial espionage, basically, dirty tricks against your opposition. And I dare say they can do the same to you. So that's an interesting mechanic as well. So they've got lots of basics underneath this that you can play with. It's 
a fact of that they, it's a matter of getting them all right at the end of the day to uh, to turn it into a game that you can actually play um, over the long term. I mean, this is one of those games I think where you, you're going to face this. You can try it in different countries. There's a fair amount of replay value in this because uh, there's a fair amount of randomization here. As far as I'm aware, we're unlikely to get any sort of customization in terms of building your own world, um, recreating towns and so on uh, on the map. Uh, you, the game is what it is. The map is what it is, what you see here and now. But there's enough to get on with here, I think. Um, in the base game itself will provide quite a nice game for quite a few players who love this sort of tycoony management logistical kind of challenge. It will be quite fun. Now, at the moment, the Steam page is still saying uh, release in quarter two, 2020, which is basically summer. So quarter two, that's the second quarter. That is going to be the end of June. I've not had any indication whether that is going to be full release or early access. I'd be Personally, I'd be surprised if it was a full release at that point, though we have see, seen some games which have been released, fully released, uh, remarkably early, uh, still needing a fair amount of work. So they may do that. I think that's unlikely. That does tend to generate a lot of negative publicity and uh, reviews and hampers, I think, the ongoing development of the game. But if they can get this into early access um, with a few more tweaks to it, I think they can make this this game really sing. So I'm looking forward to that. So if you've played this, uh, if you've access to this particular alpha build, um, then do let me know what your thoughts are on it, uh, how much further you think they've got to go in terms of development, uh, how much potential you see in the game, or if you agree or disagree with my criticisms of it, if you've got different uh, ideas about what's good and what's not so good about this game do let me know in the comments below but that's it thank you so much to adrian a different adrian uh, who asked uh well indirectly asked i think for an, another update on this game uh giving me the opportunity to review it again if you've enjoyed this uh, little second look at do let me know uh, a little bit of a thumbs up would be lovely a like that's always good even better though as i said if you've got anything to say about it it would simply be awesome it'd be wonderful to hear from you just drop in any notes you like into the comments box below and if you've not already subscribed to the channel you know you can do that now and that way you'll know when i upload any other videos either about transport inc or any of my other let's play videos or series on the channel but from me ajax post here having another look at transport inc i'll see you again soon but until then bye bye for now